In the last two modules, we learned about the design of the SVAJ curves for different types of follower motions. In the next couple of modules, we will concentrate on the design of the CAM for a given SVAJ curve. CAM design involves the design of the profile of the CAM, which is the shape of this curve on the surface, determining the size of the CAM, and determining the offset or eccentricity between follower axis and cam center. Now there are two ways to obtain a cam profile, graphical synthesis and analytical synthesis. In this lecture, we will concentrate on the graphical synthesis procedure. Two key metrics that are used to evaluate a cam are the pressure angle and the curvature of the cam curve. As we will see, the cam size and the choice of the eccentricity or offset are the two major factors that affect these two metrics, apart from the SVAJ curves. And the design of the cam profile depends on the displacement curve that we have seen before. We will be considering the following three types of cam followers, the knife edge followers, the roller follower, and the flat faced follower. The knife edge follower has a point end the roller follower is an example of a curved follower surface and as the name implies, a flat faced follower is an example where the contact surface of the follower is flat or a line. One aspect to note is that for the knife edge follower, the contact point on the follower does not change during the whole motion. Whereas for the roller follower and the flat faced follower, the contact point changes during the motion. Now let us introduce some common terminology in CAMs that we will be using for the rest of the lecture. The CAM profile is the curve that defines the shape of the CAM. In this picture on the right, this colored line shows the CAM profile. The base circle of a CAM is the smallest circle, and this word is important, the smallest circle. That can be drawn tangent to the CAM surface or CAM profile and concentric with the camshaft. So in the picture on the right, this dotted circle shown here is the base circle. And all radial cams will have a base circle. A tracer point is the point at the center of the follower that generates what is known as the pitch curve. So for a roller follower, the center of the roller is the tracer point. And the curve that it traces out, which is shown here, is known as the pitch curve. And this path is generated assuming that the cam stays stationary and the follower moves on this cam surface. For knife edge followers, the cam profile and the pitch curve are the same. There is no distinction between them. For flat faced follower also, there is no distinction between the cam surface and the pitch curve. For curved followers, of which the roller follower is an example, there is a distinction between the cam surface and the pitch curve. And analogous to the base circle, we can define a prime circle. And the prime circle is the smallest circle drawn on the pitch curve with the center as the cam center. So in this picture, this circle here is the prime circle. And note that the prime circle is only defined for roller or curved followers. For knife edge or flat faced followers, prime circle and base circle are the same thing. So in the rest of the lecture, I will be mainly using the term prime circle and you should note that when the context is that of a knife edge follower or a flat faced follower, what I mean by prime circle is base circle. The pressure angle is defined as the angle between the direction of the follower motion and the axis of transmission. So let us look at this figure. At the contact between the cam and the follower, there is a common tangent. The axis of transmission is perpendicular to this common tangent, which is along this direction. This is the direction along which the normal force from the cam acts on the roller. The tangent is known as the axis of slip. And in this picture, we have drawn the axis of slip so that it passes through the roller center. The follower moves along the vertical direction. So the pressure angle is this angle phi between the axis of transmission and the axis of follower motion or direction of follower motion. Note that the transmission angle is 90 degree minus the pressure angle. Now if this is the direction 
in which the normal force Fn is acting, then the component of this normal force along the axis of motion is Fn cos phi. So you want the pressure angle to be as small as possible so that most of this normal force goes into moving the follower along the axis of its motion. From this expression, it can be seen that when phi equal to 90 degree, there will be no force acting on the follower. As a practical thumb rule, the pressure angle should be between 0 and 30 degree. The pressure angle depends upon this contact point because the normal depends upon the contact point. So the pressure angle changes as the cam moves. And what we are interested in is the point where the pressure angle is the maximum because that pressure angle will limit the performance of this cam follower system. This point on the pitch curve with maximum pressure angle is called the pitch point. The offset or eccentricity is the perpendicular distance between the follower's axis of motion and the center of the cam. In this picture, the center of the cam is here. The axis of motion of the follower is here. So this distance here is the offset, which we denote by epsilon. When epsilon is equal to zero, that there is no offset, we call the follower an aligned follower. And when there is a non-zero epsilon, we call the follower offset follower. And you should remember these two terms, offset follower and aligned follower. For a given angle of the camshaft, the pressure angle is given by the arc tangent of V minus epsilon by S plus square root of RP square minus epsilon square. Now I will not derive this formula in this module. So let us first understand the notations. V and S are the velocity and the displacement of the follower that we obtain from the SVAJ curves. Note that the unit of velocity here is in length per radian. And that's why I have used the small v here. Epsilon is the offset of the follower and RP is the prime circle radius. For knife edge follower, this should be read as the base circle radius. So once we have obtained the follower motion, that is, we have designed the displacement and the velocity curve. The pressure angle is dependent on the prime circle radius and the eccentricity. So the dependence on the prime circle radius is pretty straightforward and the dependence on the eccentricity is quite complicated. Since RP is in the denominator, keeping SV and epsilon constant, as RP increases, phi decreases. Because as RP increases, the denominator increases. So this whole number here, it decreases. That means the angle decreases. This implies that one simple way of making sure that you have a good pressure angle is to make the cam as large as possible or to increase the RP as much as you can. However, increasing RP or the prime circle radius means that the size of the cam increases, therefore the material cost and machining cost increases. Furthermore, you may have packaging constraints which limits the size of the cam that you can use. So RP or the radius of the prime circle is my proxy to the size of the cam. With these definitions, let us get an overview of the entire cam design procedure. The first step is that for a partially specified follower motion, we need to design the SVAJ curves. And this is what we did in the last two modules. Then we need to choose the prime circle radius or the base circle radius subject to packaging constraints and cost. And at first, we can assume that the offset or eccentricity is zero unless there are some domain-specific constraints that requires it to be non-zero. We will then synthesize the cam profile with the displacement curve and choice of RP. I will show this to you in the next module, how to carry out this step. Then we will check the pressure angle. And remember, the pressure angle changes along with the camshaft rotation. So what we have to do here is we have to check the pressure angle of the pitch point. If the pressure angle of the pitch point is less than the desired upper bound, which is less than 30 degrees, then the design is okay kinematically. If the pressure angle of the pitch point is undesirable, first we try to increase RP as much as cost and other constraints allow. Then we vary epsilon to reduce the pressure angle. And this step requires trial and error because the dependence of the pressure angle on epsilon is complicated. As it turns out that if you are rotating anti-clockwise, 
are for positive angular velocity omega. Positive eccentricity decreases pressure angle on rise but will increase it on fall. And negative eccentricity does the reverse. So depending on where you need the pressure angle to be smaller, you have to be really careful about this step. And this is very context specific. Now if all of the above steps fails to produce an acceptable design, we need to go back to the displacement diagram and the timings. So we need to go back to this step here and repeat everything. In the next module, we will see methods to synthesize the CAM profile with a given displacement curve and choice of RP.